In this problem, we have to find the absolute extrema of this function on this interval. So we're looking for the absolute minimum and max. So we want both. And there's something called the extreme value theorem that says whenever you have a continuous function, like this one, on a closed interval, so we have brackets, uh, you're always going to have an answer. You're always going to have an absolute max and absolute min. So let's go ahead and go through it very, very carefully. So the first thing we want to do is maybe rewrite this function in a nicer way that lets us differentiate it. So there is a 1 here. So we can write g of x as follows. So g of x is equal to x to the 1 over 9. It's always this number over this number. Okay, so step one, when you're finding, um, you know, absolute extrema, is to uh, find the critical numbers that are between negative one and one. So take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So g prime of x is equal to, so you bring down the one ninth using the power rule here. So we have x, then we subtract one. So one ninth minus one is really uh, 1 ninth minus 9 ninths, which is really negative 8 ninths. So we have x to the negative 8 ninths. And we set this equal to 0. Okay, so take the derivative and set it equal to 0. We're looking for critical numbers. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as g prime of x equals 1 over 9. And then you can bring that x downstairs to make the exponent positive. So x to the 8 ninths. And this is equal to 0. So notice that the derivative is undefined at x equals 0. So it's undefined at x equals 0. And why is that important? Well, remember, critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function, in this case, between negative 1 and 1, where the derivative is 0 or where it's undefined. So because the derivative is undefined at 0, and 0 is between negative 1 and 1, x equals 0 is going to be a critical number. Again, critical numbers are numbers in the domain of the function, which in this case is given to us, where the derivative is 0 or undefined. So we see that it's undefined at 0, so we make note of that. Now, this will never be equal to 0. Um, it's impossible. If you try to solve it, look what happens. Let me show you. Let's say you, say you have this write it again over here, and say you try to solve for x. Well, how would you do that? Well, you would clear the fractions, right? You would multiply by 9x to the 8 ninths times 9x to the 8 ninths. But then this cancels, this cancels, this cancels, this cancels. So you get 1 equals, and then 0 times anything is 0. So you get 1 equals 0. So no, it's no good. That's impossible. So it's never 0. So the only critical number is x equals 0. Okay. The second step in this problem, so once you find your critical numbers, is to take your critical number, which is x equals 0, and take your endpoints, which are negative 1 and 1, and plug them all back into the original function. Okay? The biggest answer you get is your max, and the smallest is your min. So let's see, so g of negative 1. Go back to the key is to go back to the original one. Okay? So this is going to be the ninth root of negative 1 which is negative 1. Let's go ahead and do 0. g of 0 is equal to the ninth root of 0, which is just 0. And then g of 1 is the ninth root of 1, which is equal to 1. So you just go back and you just plug each of them into the original. okay? And that's your min. That's the smallest one. And that's your max. That's the biggest one. Now most of the time, like if you're using like an online homework system, these, it'll want the ordered pair. So, so the min is at negative 1, 1, and the max is at uh, 1, 1. Now, it's important to keep in mind, though, um, that the actual minimum is negative 1. So this is a perfectly acceptable answer. So like, you know, if you were like doing a test or something, um, negative 1 would be 
a perfectly acceptable answer for the minimum because it's the smallest y value. Mins and maxes are y values, right? They're not ordered pairs. And the max here is one. That would be a perfectly acceptable answer, except most of the time people uh, have like online homework and they always want the ordered pairs. So that's how you would write it. So again, recap, you take the derivative, set it equal to zero. In this case, that didn't work, but it was undefined. So this one's a little bit trickier, right? People always forget about the undefined part. And then you take all your answers from step one and your endpoints, whatever numbers are, are here and here, in this case, negative one and one, and you plug them back into the original one, okay, into the original function. And the biggest thing you get is your max, the smallest is the min. And I wrote them here as ordered pairs. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.